Hi, this is Michael Kohler with Coral Castle Explained. In my last video, I did a correlation between the year 2012 and the Coral Castle. I want to just clarify something. I do not see 2012 as being the end of the world. The Mayans did not see 2012 as the end either. It is simply a point on the calendar, in my opinion, and although there is the possibility something tragic could occur, like a solar flare, or the notorious kill shot that Ed Dames, the remote viewer, has been talking about for 15 years that has not yet occurred, that might happen, but I'm, I'm not a believer in that. The only reason I introduced the Mayan calendar was to introduce the fact that cycles and planetary alignments have something to do with the Coral Castle. That is all. It was merely referential. Okay, let's get into this video. In my last video, I said this video would be about uh, concepts called intention, resonant frequencies, and phase transitions. So let me start with intention. According to an internet definition, um, intention is a determination to act a certain way or what one intends to do or bring about. Those are actually good definitions of intention. Um, I'm thinking of intention in a completely different way. The intention that I am talking about has uh, been around for thousands of years, at least in concept, um, probably long before that. It's a power or energy, or a concept of it, that was first introduced to me in the Carlos Castaneda series. In the books, uh, Don Juan, who is Carlos's teacher, teaches him about intent. He stated that this energy comes out around the area of the navel. He also referred to it as his will and that this energy with your intention could affect a change on the things that you were focused upon. So if you are a fan of Wayne Dyer or Tony Robbins you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. The concept of intent in my opinion is very similar to um, what is discussed in each uh, Eastern traditions uh, in which people are able to harness a power within themselves and cause an effective change. In fact, the concept of intention has been taken up by some pretty heavy hitters. Uh, Lynn McTaggart, who did the intention experiment, uh, Greg Braden and Dr. Bruce Limpton, uh, they're all at the forefront of this supposedly mythical belief which they have shown quite conclusively is much more than hearsay or religious dogma. The reason that intention is interesting to me in regard to the Coral Castle is due to the work of one man. His name is Masaru Emoto. In his experiments he was able to show that thoughts, both emotional in uh, positive energy and negative energy, could affect a change in water, even at a distance, as evidenced by freezing water and imaging the frozen water crystals that you can see here. This is an example of um, good energy. Uh, you have the uh, six-pointed um, uh, symbol here. Um, I say symbol because that will make more sense to you later in this video. And then you have its counterpart, which is uh, a mess based upon negative energy. So the work of Dr. Emoto got me thinking about a concept called resonance. This word is commonly used when describing similarities between people. Um, perhaps you have resonated with the words that someone has said and you agree with them and you feel they are correct. That is a, a form of resonance. In science, there are different uh, aspects to it. Uh, there are structures, uh, resonant waves, resonant frequencies and um, sound resonance, which is a very interesting concept that relates very much to my research. So in regard to physics, frequencies, and sound, it can most easily be explained in this way. If you were to pluck a stringed instrument, say a guitar, near a piano, the string that you plucked has a certain frequency that will resonate with the strings of the piano just a few feet away. So in the same way, Dr. Emoto's experiments seem to show that human thought, specifically that of human emotion and intent, uh, working together, they can cause 
an energetic feeling to be sent and stored in water and that this intention can be seen in the crystal structures that um, are observed here. So what does this have to do with the Coral Castle? Well, it's my opinion that Edward Lee Scalman was able to tap into a certain frequency, an energy in the earth that allowed him to move, levitate, and mold the coral as he saw fit. In my book, The Coral Castle Explained, I go into great detail on how this energy transference was possible, but it can be summarized in the following way. Ed was able to tap into the natural energy of the earth itself, energy that at a specific resonant frequency allowed him to manipulate the laws of physics and this was done through what is called phase transition. Phase transition is actually most easily described when talking about the water cycle. Uh, water in its liquid form is evaporated, now it's in a gaseous state. The water vapor then condenses back into a liquid and we see it as rain. In the same way Ed was able to take the latent energy of the earth tap into it at a specific frequency, very important, and move it from its potential state, empower it with his intention, just like in the water experiments with Emoto, and move it into a kinetic state that allowed him to work on the coral. The question is, how did he learn how to do this? The answer may lie in a few clues that Ed left behind. Ed claimed to know the secrets of the pyramids and to tie all of this together in my next video I will show you that there is a direct connection between the blocks that were used at the Giza Plateau to build the Great Pyramids that you see here and the coral stones that Ed used to build the Coral Castle. In fact, this connection, this frequency that Ed was able to tap into is specifically revealed not only in the stones that made both Giza and the Coral Castle, but in the symbology that Ed used repeatedly at the Coral Castle and is still there to this day. And yes, this picture that I'm pointing at is a clue. Until next time.